Hey, welcome back to Viewpoint Christian Academy. This is our third part in our Passion Week series. Let me ask you this question. If you were with Jesus during the Passion Week, what would you be doing on Monday of the Passion Week? Well, stay tuned because we're going to talk about that. So what happened on Monday of the Passion Week? Well, as Jesus had come, we, we discovered this in our previous session on the triumphal entry, he entered into Jerusalem on Sunday, and he came into Jerusalem, and he walked around. The Bible tells us that, that he went up into the temple and looked around. But then he left the city and went back to a place called Bethany where he spent the night. In fact, all throughout this week, up until, until probably about Wednesday night, Jesus would actually commute in and out of the city, and he stayed at a little town called Bethany. And it was just kind of south of, of Jerusalem, and they would go out and in every day into the city. Well, on their way into the city, as they're marching into, walking into Jerusalem from Bethany, the Bible tells us that Jesus saw a fig tree afar off. It had leaves, and it was green, and he went to that fig tree, expecting to be able to pick a fig and eat it. And when he got to the fig tree, there were no figs. And the Bible says that Jesus said this, I'm going to read it to you. It's found in the book of, of Mark, chapter 11. And uh, let, let me read verses 13 and 14. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he found it, he came. And, and when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of figs was not. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And his disciples heard what he said. Interestingly enough, this is a, a very unique event that is recorded for us in, in the Gospels that happened on Monday morning as Jesus is going back into Jerusalem. And that was that he saw a fig tree, came to it, no figs on it, and he cursed the tree. It's kind of baffled a lot of people as to why did Jesus do this. But, but it's made very clear to us when they come back the next day, and I know we're jumping to Tuesday, but they did their things. We'll talk about the rest of what they did on Monday. They did everything. They left the city. They came back again on Tuesday. And as they're coming back in on Tuesday, they noticed that fig tree in one 24-hour period had completely withered up and died. And, and Peter, in, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 21, Peter remembers this and he says to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say to you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What was the purpose of this cursing of the fig tree? Well, the purpose of this cursing of the fig tree was to provide us a lesson in faith, to show us, as Jesus had said, you are cursed and, and, and will have fruit no more. We have that same ability, if we exercise faith, to get from God the things that we are requesting in that way. And uh, it's a little strange, perhaps, and people have looked at that's strange, but we have to understand that from that passage, from all the passages that record this, the purpose of this, Jesus doing this and illustrating this to his disciples, was to say, if you have faith and believe, you'll get what you ask for. Now, that's not to say that, you know, uh, Jesus uh, is like a magic wand. You go, oh, in the name of Jesus, boing, boing, and you get whatever. No, 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 no. That's not what that means. The point is, if you have faith and believe in the Lord, that you will have the things that you need to do what he wants you to do, and you'll be able to go and do whatever as you pray and ask the Lord. Trust God to provide for your needs. That's the point of that. Well, what do they do after that? After they curse the fig tree, they go on and there's more. One other really significant event that happened on this Monday, and that was that Jesus went into the temple. Now, the day before, the Bible tells us that he had kind of scouted around at the temple. He'd gone in, he'd, he's walking and around and he's looking and he's seeing this and he's inspecting everything that's going on in the temple. The day, next day he came back and Jesus was angry. Oh yes, did Jesus get angry? He most certainly did. And Jesus was very angry. And for the second time in his ministry, and I say the second time because you can read about the first time in the Gospel of John in the very beginning, chapter 2, that Jesus went in and he cleansed the temple three years, three about three and a half years ago, 
He had, he had done this once before, but here he is back at Jerusalem. He's going to do it again. And he goes in and he cleanses the temple. And the Bible tells us that Jesus got a whip and he went into the temple and he began to overturn the tables of the money lenders and drove out all those that were selling and buying in the temple. Now, this is a unique situation, okay? Uh, because the Bible gives us a few insights. Let's talk about this. Most people don't think of Jesus as angry and going in and hitting someone with a whip and throwing things around. But in this particular case, Jesus did that. Jesus was so upset, indignant, we'll use that word, at what he had seen, that he saw all of this injustice that was occurring, this evil, this wrong, going on in the temple of God, the house of God. And he couldn't take it. He couldn't tolerate it. He said, no, we're going to put an end to this right now. And he went in and he overthrew and turned out all of the uh, all of this uh, all of this and everything and and uh, some people are baffled by that but there's a clue as to why Jesus was so angry in the text of scripture and the text is that Jesus when he drove them out he said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations but you have made it a den of thieves the temple was an immaculate building. This was, this was not the original temple of Solomon that we read about in the Bible. This was uh, another temple. This was the temple of Herod. Uh, that temple had been destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, and then it was rebuilt, and then there was problems again, and Herod repaired and restored it. So this was, this was the temple of Herod's period. Uh, but it was still a beautiful and amazing building. The temple was divided into many different parts. It was a very, very large structure. And there were many parts. And, and the thing about the temple was that there were places for each kind of person to go. They had a court for women. In other words, there's a place that the woman could go, but they couldn't go any, any further. They could go into the court of women, they couldn't go any further. There was a court of men. The men could go into the court of the men. Uh, but some of the men could go a little bit further. The priests, they could go into other places, but all the rest had to stay there. So the priests, they could go further into this a place called the holy place. And they'd go into the holy place and they could do some ministering before the Lord, but no one else was allowed in. And then even further, there was one special place with a veil. And the veil uh, covered a place called the holy of holies. And inside it was supposed to be the Ark of the Covenant. And in there, one time a year, one man, the high priest, could go in and pray to God. So there were places where only certain people were allowed. There was also a, a leper court and other places. One place that was on the outskirts of the temple was called the court of the Gentiles. And the Gentiles were people who weren't Jews. They weren't born a Jewish person. But the Gentiles could go into the court of the Gentiles, but they could go no further. They couldn't go into the court of the woman if they were a woman. They couldn't go into the court of the men if they were a man. They couldn't go into any other place. They couldn't go past that one strict secluded area. But that was allowed because when, 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 when people believed on the Lord and they weren't Jews, they were from a Gentile nation, they could come and they could still worship God in that way. And God had designed it and God had set it up that way. Well, where was this selling and buying and everything taking place? It was taking place in the court of the Gentiles. And it was basically like a big mall or a big bazaar everywhere. There was all kinds of activity. It was virtually impossible for anybody to actually take time to worship God because it was like trying to have church right in the middle uh, of Woodstock Fair or, or have church right in the middle of, of, a big, uh, a big, of a mall where there was thousands of people walking and marching all around, buying and selling and doing all of this. There was no way. And Jesus was so indignant and upset by that that he went in and he threw out everybody. He threw out all of these people that were doing that. And for the rest of the day, him and his disciples kind of set up a guard and kept them all out and made sure that that day, at least, it was a house of prayer for all nations. And no one was being hindered in their prayer. Well, you know what? That shows us something, a couple things, really, I think that we can take away from, from this story on Monday when Jesus went uh, back into Jerusalem from Bethany, back into Jerusalem and, and, and had this activity in the temple. I think it shows us two things. One, it shows us that Jesus was full of surprises. Jesus, the man who healed. Jesus, the man who was full of compassion. Jesus, the man who loved sinners. Jesus, the man who did all of these amazing and wonderful things. When he needed to, he could get angry. You know, it's not a sin to be angry. But a lot of times when we are angry, we do things we shouldn't and we sin. But you know what? We should be angry over injustice. 
and we should do something about it. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go in and start flipping tables over and everything, right? Jesus actually had authority to do that as the Messiah and as the Son of God. It was His Father's house. He had authority to go in and do that. But you know what? When we see something that's wrong, when there's an injustice, we need to stand up and we need to say something about it. I think we could take that away. That's a great faith lesson. But not only that, but Jesus loved everyone. Not only the Jews that He had come for, He loved the Gentiles. I don't know about you, but I'm a Gentile. I'm not a Jew. I wasn't part of that chosen group of people from Abraham's seed. But God loved me so much that He wanted to make a way of salvation for all. And so now I can be a partaker of all of that goodness because Jesus loved the world so much. Well, what an exciting Monday that must have been. Boy, I wish I could have been there and seen that. I'm glad that I'm alive now and I'm glad that I get to serve the Lord now. But boy, wouldn't that have been exciting to see? Well, tomorrow we'll talk about what happened on Tuesday of the Passion Week. Uh, so I'll hang around and next time, uh, hopefully it'll be a blessing to you. All right, take care.